What is good, everyone? What is good? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're hopping back into the Go Battle League arena, this time returning to the open Great League to try our luck with a meta line. But give me some slack here. It's not entirely hyper meta. We have Obstagoon on the lead. And Obstagoon's job here is to hunt down those normal types that we're going to be seeing on the lead of the opponent's teams. So mainly Dunsparce is the first Pokemon that comes to mind, as well as Lickitung, and also be seeking out those Sableyes that we also might see on the lead. Obstagoon isn't going to be appreciating the Metachams that we might be seeing on the lead. So in those instances, we will be pivoting into our safe swap. And today that's going to be Cresselia. Cresselia has fantastic coverage. I don't need to give you the whole run through of Cresselia. Psycho Cut generates energy extremely quickly. Grass Knot is going to give us fantastic play against especially the Mud Boys, but also give us a bit of a baiting move and then Moonblast to hit those fighters, to hit the Scrafties, to hit the Metacham, to hit the Obstagoons, as well as the Sableyes. And then in the back, we're going to have Noctowl. Now, this team runs extremely fluidly, so just because Noctowl is in the back doesn't necessarily mean Noctowl is going to be our clue. But Noctowl also, following the same sort of theme with the team, is going to give us fantastic coverage over the meta. So we're going to be seeking out those Grass types as well as those Metacham and Sableye. Noctowl obviously wants to look out for Lantern, and that's why we have Cresselia and Obstagoon to cover Noctowl's back in those instances. Overall, this team has fantastic synergy and runs extremely fluidly, which I will do my best to demonstrate in the upcoming battles. And without further ado, let's go ahead and hop straight into the first one. Getting into the first battle, we have Obstagoon on the lead against Metacham. So right away, we have a horrible lead. One of the worst possible leads for us besides the occasional Charmer we might see on the lead. So we're going to immediately pivot out into our, into our Cresselia and the opponent counter swaps into Lantern. Now the opponent builds up a massive amount of energy, but fires off a Surf here. So we're going to be able to easily take this matchup going even shields with Cresselia as we have already reached our second Grass Knot. Grass Knot, of course, dealing super effective damage onto the opponent's Lantern. And like this, we're going to be able to grab the opponent's first shield. Now we can survive whatever the opponent throws at us and it's just gonna be another surf. So the opponent continuing to bait here. And at this point, they just have to full commit to the surfs, but we're going to be able to outpace them here. As we do expend one shield, we're matching shields with them now. We can either take switch or we can grab a second shield here. The opponent going to expend both shields. We're going to expend our second shield to win alignment. Alignment being everything here with Metacham on the lead. We want to avoid Metacham aligned against our Obstagoon at all costs, and it will cost us two shields, but we are successful in flipping switch. As the opponent will be bringing in a Dugong. So this game is looking fantastic for us. Dugong coming in against our Cresselia. As Dugong eats a Grass Knot before pivoting out into Metacham, who gets the counter down onto our Cresselia. Opponent firing off an Ice Punch into our Noctowl. That's okay. Noctowl is able to tank two Ice Punches, and we're going to fire off this Sky Attack into the opponent's Metacham, which will get them extremely low, but will not be able to KO. I was expecting that move to KO. This may be problematic as the opponent able to counter us down. As Noctowl goes down to the opponent's Metacham, we bring in our Obstagoon. The opponent now at the Icy one. We're going to throw on poor timing just because we want to get the KO onto this Dugong. But Cross Chop, not enough to KO the opponent's Dugong. But luckily, we are able to counter down just as the opponent is able to reach their first charge move. As Obstagoon calls game on a close one, GG to the opponent, well played, thank you for the match. Hopping into the next battle, we have the same lead, Metacham on the lead against our Noctowl, or against our Obstagoon rather, that is once again horrible for us. We're going to be pivoting out into our Cresselia, and we are met by the opponent's Noctowl. Noctowl does build up to the Shadow Ball, but we are going to call the bait, and it's just going to be the Sky Attack. Meanwhile, opponent expends their first shield to block our Moonblast, and this is great for us as we have already grabbed one shield from the opponent, 
and we are able to get some chip damage off with the Moonblast. Opponent continuing to build up energy here. They are now very nearly at the back-to-back -back sky attacks, and this time, bang, it will be the Shadow Ball, which will be KOing our Cresselia. Luckily for us, we are one shield up, and the opponent gives up alignment, hard swaps into their Metacham, and like this, we're going to be able to align our Noctowl to the opponent's Metacham. We are one shield up, so we're going to expend our first shield, block the damage from the Ice Punch. We know that Ice Punch is going to be doing super effective damage, and we do want to preserve some health on our Noctowl. We're going to double shield here as the opponent has built up to the Psychic. They're going to fire off that Psychic and then go down with their Metacham. Opponent brings in their own Noctowl. Remember, Noctowl left with two charge moves, but we have a decent amount of energy on our Noctowl as well. This Sky Attack will be getting the opponent's Noctowl extremely low. We're going to build up to the Sky Attack before pivoting out into our Obstagoon. And this is horrible for us as the opponent makes sense why they were okay with giving up alignment as they do have a Alolan Ninetales waiting in the back. Running Charm now aligned against our Obstagoon. But Obstagoon able to get to two charge moves. Do some meaningful chip onto the A9 before getting charmed down. And this Sky Attack will be KOing the opponent's A9. But they are already at the Sky Attack with a singular HP. One pixel on their health bar. And they are able to fire off that Sky Attack and call game. Well played by the opponent. Thank you for the match. An absolute nail biter there. There was not much I could have done there. As the opponent did do a fantastic job with hiding their... A9 in the back there, Charm user, until late game, getting the full Charm down onto our Obstagoon. Getting into the next battle, we have Obstagoon on the lead against Noctowl, so this is a relatively neutral lead for us. We do lose this matchup, but I'm okay here, better than Metacham that we have been seeing for the previous two battles. As the opponent has reached their first charge move, and we're going to be firing off the cross chop here, should be going for the Night Slash, fishing for the boost, as well as Night Slash being a stab move. And I do realize my mistake quickly. And this second charge move we're firing will be the Night Slash. And as you see, it does do a little bit more damage, but we are able to catch the next Sky Attack onto our Cresselia. Now, Sky Attack going to do some chip damage, but the opponent going to be staying in here, building up to the Shadow Ball. And they are able to reach the Shadow Ball as they would be winning CMP. So we do not throw our energy. And like this, we are able to over farm by a massive amount, having to give up one shield in the process. But I deemed it worthwhile as we are able to grab the opponent's shield and they are able to reach another charge move here. Unfortunately for us, it will be the Shadow Ball and we are going to expend our second and final shield as the opponent pivots into their Lantern. This is fantastic for us. Hard pivoting into the Lantern while we have two Grass Knots stored up is excellent for us, especially given that we have our Noctowl in the back as the second Grass Knot will be grabbing the opponent's final shield and we will be able to preserve our Cresselia by catching this charge move onto our Obstagoon as T-Bolt is enough to KO our Obstagoon. So there we have Obstagoon still providing some utility for us after that initial chip damage it provided onto Noctowl. As a result of the catch, we are able to outpace the opponent to the next Grass Knot. Grass Knot able to KO the opponent's Lantern and we're sitting pretty as they do have a Metacham. Metacham not able to get to a charge move to KO our Cresselia before we reach the Moonblast. And this is looking like a GG as I'm trying to swap into the Noctowl, but our charge move or our switch clock is just not up yet. As I will be firing off this Leaf Blade to continue stalling out the clock, KO the opponent's Noctowl before pivoting into our own Noctowl. Now, Metacham has built up an insane amount of energy here, but it will just be the Psychic. And as a result, I think we should be taking this, but no, they're at another Psychic. Will this KO our Noctowl? Psychic does massive damage, but no, Noctowl able to survive on a singular HP on the blessings of its ancestors. There you see the pixel. You might not even see it as Noctowl calls game. Well played by the opponent. Thank you for the match. That was an absolute nail biter as we hop into the next battle welcome back to open great league where you see the same five six seven pokemon recycled you see the same leads we've seen two metacham leads two noctowl leads and like this 
with the opponent pivoting into their Medicham, we will be safe swapping or counter swapping into our Cresselia. Opponent throws a nice punch into us, and it doesn't really matter what the opponent throws. Cresselia does not care. However, we are able to deal massive, super effective damage onto the opponent's Medicham with our Moonblast. And like this, we can continue over farming by a massive amount as we are very nearly at the back to back Grass Knots. I could have over farmed by even more looking back at this, but we are able to KO the opponent's Medicham with that Grass Knot. Will the opponent be bringing their Noctowl back in? They will, and we are now at the Moonblast with the opponent continuing to build up energy. They are not yet at their first charge move as Moonblast able to land onto the opponent's Noctowl, and they are continuing to build fantastic counting by the opponent, knowing that we are just short of the next Moonblast, firing off the Sky Attack, able to KO our Cresselia. And at this point, I realize, okay, we're bringing in our Noctowl here. I'd rather have the Noctowl aligned against Noctowl as opposed to a potential Lantern in the back. So we're going to be bringing in Noctowl. We're able to tank that first Sky Attack, outpace the opponent to the next charge move, and we're able to grab their first shield. Now, we are getting a bit late in the game here, but we're going to preserve both shields we don't yet know what they have in the back if it's a lantern we're sitting pretty if it is a charmer like a9 like we've seen before we might be in trouble as we bm catch on to our obstacle for whatever reason but the opponent is going to counter swap into their final pokemon and it will be a surfetched waiting in the back surfetch dealing massive counter damage onto our Obstagoon and like this this is going to be a GG as Obstagoon got completely deleted opponent can easily shield up their Surfetch and get the neutral counter down onto our Noctowl GG's of the opponent well played hopping into the next battle we have a great lead with Obstagoon on the lead against Trevenant now contrary to popular belief trevenant does still exist in the go battle league as the opponent realizing they have a horrible lead are going to be pivoting out into their lantern safe swap we're going to build up to the back-to-back -back charge moves on our obstacle before pivoting out into our chrysalia this is okay for us as the opponent able to throw a thunderbolt and a surf before we fire off any charge moves but our thinking here is the energy on Obstagoon may be more meaningful than the health on Cresselia, especially because we don't necessarily need to win switch here. Trevenant has a horrible matchup against Obstagoon, but the matchup might be even worse against our Noctowl, so we're okay with losing alignment. All that being said, Cresselia being the absolute beast tank that it is, is able to survive that final surf, win switch advantage for us for free being down all of that energy going down no shields we are still able to win switch as the opponent shadow claws down our Cresselia and we're able to bring back in our Obstagoon. Obstagoon has built up a massive amount of energy here we're going to be bringing in our Noctowl here we have an energy lead on the opponent as we do see their final Pokemon and it will be the Galarian Stunfisk. Noctowl can easily survive two rock slides before the third takes it out so we're going to be cognizant of that and we also know that our obstacle still has about 50 percent hp and two shields meaning it will be absolutely deadly as we're able to get to the back-to-back -back shadow balls here and this is looking like a gg to me showing how low the galarian stun fisk is it's now in counter down range especially provided that we have two shields so we can easily try and get to the next charge moves but Noctowl has more than done its job here, gotten the opponent's Galarian Stunfisk extremely low with the Trevenant coming back in and low in HP in its own regard. And at this point, it's not even BM, I'm just realizing both of these Pokemon are in counter down range. We're going to do double resisted counters, counter down the opponent's Trevenant, counter down the opponent's Galarian Stunfisk as Obstagoon calls game. GG well played by the opponent, thank you for the match. We have another fantastic lead in the next battle. Obstagoon on the lead against Coffer Grigus, and the opponent's coffin is staying in here. Are they running double ghost? Why are they not pivoting out of this Obstagoon lead? We will have to wait and see for next week's episode. Just kidding, we'll find out soon. As the opponent throws a psychic into us, we are going to double resist that with our dark typing before firing off a night slash into the opponent. We're continuing to count and 
expecting a potential catch from the opponent, we're going to be throwing this Night Slash right before they get to their next charge move, and they let their Kafagrigus go down for free. So clearly, they do not want to see our Obstagoon with whatever they have in the back. They bring in a Farfetch'd, not a Surfetch'd. This is a Farfetch'd, and it took me a second to remember what moves this Pokemon will be running. It is running Fury Cutter as well as the Leaf Blade we see here. We're going to respect the damage by shielding up the opponent's charge move, and I do believe they're also running Brave Bird. Will we see the Brave Bird? It will be the Brave Bird. Bang! Does massive damage, but Cresselia easily able to live, and the opponent pivots into their final Pokemon. What's it going to be? It's the Superior. So GG's to the opponent. That is extremely unfortunate. As respect to them, they are running Spice, but they are also hard countered on the lead on the save swap as well as in the back as we are going to pivot into our Noctowl, doing the opponent a solid showing them what we have showing them that hey it's not your fault you played well but you never really had a chance here as Noctowl does not have to expend any shields here can easily get the full farm down onto the opponent maybe not so easily as frenzy plant is an absolutely busted move the opponent will be reaching another charge move here and it will be the frenzy plant we're going to expend our final shield, take out this superior as they do still have one shield, but they choose to not delay the inevitable as Noctowl calls game. Well played by the opponent. Thank you for the match. And thank you to all of my opponents today as you were able to claim that fantastic set. I had a great time hopping back into the open great league with a team that is admittedly meta, but not as hardcore meta as some of those teams that you will see out there. And that's kind of the balancing act of Open Great League, right? There's nothing wrong with running meta, especially if you want to climb. Those Pokemon are meta for a reason. They're the strongest Pokemon and all other things being equal, they're going to give you the best chance to climb. But that doesn't mean that no other Pokemon are viable, as we were hopefully able to demonstrate in today's successful battles. Now, once again, I do realize this isn't the spiciest team, so if you made it this far in the video, and if you're in Open Great League and you're having success with a more spicy team, or you're having more fun with a more off meta team, go ahead and drop that team in the comments. Let me know where you're using. Let me know how it's going for you. And I will be happy to showcase that team here on this channel. But that's gonna be all from me. Thank you so much for stopping by. Remember to enjoy the small things. Peace.